Good morning and welcome to Get to the Point. Uh, today we are taking the Talisoft.com on-premise system and installing the hybrid configuration wizard so we can link them up so we can start doing some migrations to the cloud. So first thing is here is we're going to designate an exchange server which is the only one they have, EX01, as the hybrid box. It's not important what box we link. There's nothing special to do on that particular box but except that one is where we run the hybrid wizard from and uh, the linkages go through to that particular server. Now on the screen here you can see I have the hybrid configuration wizard executable. This I grabbed from this website so make a note of this one it will tell you that if you go into the console you can have various ways to get it this is the easiest way to that it will download this little application here which then drops that onto your desktop so that's the one you want to be using so we are going to run this now and you can see that's the hybrid wizard and there we are ready to go so we head next on here it will now look for the server that it wants to be talking to which is like i say the only one that's existing on this on this particular environment tally ex01 so we grab that one you can choose other boxes if you want to we say next and what account do we want to use as the administrator account? It's the account we logged in as, that is all good as well. But we do need to have the sign-in account for the Office 365. Now this preferably is the one that you used when you initially signed up for 365 and made it a global admin. If you remember back from the other videos, this is tallyadmin at tallysoft.on microsoft.com which it will go and ask us for a password like so and that will link through and there now do not worry about this configuration service may be limited that is not an issue for us I'll explain why in other videos later on but that is not a problem now what it does now is it checks that it can have the linkages from into the exchange server and also the linkages into the office 365 as well so that will come back and tell us that it has succeeded on both of those if it can get that far so we give that a second to do what it needs to do happens very quickly to be fair and you can see that's now done both of them have succeeded so we say next on this now we are going to choose the full hybrid configuration. We want to do the full set with free busy sharing, the enhanced mail flow, the e discovery and a long term coexistence scenario. If we were just doing a very, very quick migration of accounts up there, we might choose the minimal, normally the full hybrid. And secondly, the organization config transfer. This will take all the objects we have, things like all the different policies and the like, and it will transfer them up to 365 as well. I'm going to do that one. We don't have many of those policies or anything but they are certainly good to do and feel free to click on learn more so to to have a look at those and see what that's really about so we'll hit next and we are obviously going to configure a federation trust between these two organizations so we can have a look at the calendar free busy on the way so we're going to enable that on the way through and that will go through and enable our trust for us now to do the trust it needs to know that we do have the talisoft.com domain for ourselves so it's going to give us a token to put in as a text record i'm going to do that now and uh, come back to you so let me pause the video while i do that and then we can tell it we've created those records So I've added that into the domain registry and I want to show you just a very quick item here so we can show you that they are in there. Now we use a system which is NSLOOKUP. Anybody who's familiar with this will set the type to text entry. We're going to set the server as the Google server and we're going to have a look what Google says about the text entries for Talisoft. And you can see here that we do have 
the item in place here, which is what it's expecting up here. So the theory is now, is that when I hit exit from here and I said, yes, I have created that entry and verified domain ownership, it should go through seamlessly and say, yes, you are done, which it does do. It can take one minute, 10 minutes, 15, depending on the registrar you have, but it generally does um, that very, very quickly. So now we have classic or modern. Now, modern hybrid technology, or topology, should I say, is, is one of those brand new things uh, for companies that aren't having particular ports open to the internet and the like. This example, we're going to use the classic hybrid topology to run. That's the one we generally use. There's specific cases to use modern hybrid topology. Go look it up, uh, have read about it, but uh, essentially here we're going to use the classic. So we hit next here, and we need to give it the on-premise credentials that we're going to be using for the Exchange Web Service. Now, this is the account that we're going to link through to do the migrations of the accounts with. Now, you can set up a nice brand new account, um, which is probably the best thing to do. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go and do that right now. So we're going to create a, another service account and we will call that one new service and I will just call it exchange hybrid we will call it in here hybrid so SVC hybrid give it a password now it does require some rights to be able to do this because this particular account is going to need to be able to migrate all of the accounts and all of the data without any type of delegation. So we are going to be a little bit gung-ho with this. We may want to bring this back a little bit. We're going to give it domain admins. We're actually going to give it schema admins. We're going to give it enterprise admins, mainly because I don't want it to have any issues. You can see org and recip check names we get the whole kit and the caboodle you can scale these back if you want to but as I say for this demo getting it through these are going to work for us so now we have this exchange hybrid account which I now go back here and enter the details of which is not going to be this one as we see hybrid and password and next on that. Now, we're not using any edge servers for this. We are using standard CAS and mailbox servers. So we're going to use that as the typical. And we are also going to have a look at the standard receive connector it's using. Now, remember, right back at the beginning of these notes, I was talking about having the inbound and outbound from these two postfix boxes. There's a bit of configuration we're going to do right at the end to make that work. But for now, we're going to use the standard receive connector, which is sitting on the EX01 box. And it's going to ask us for a send connector as well, which it is. And we're going to use this send connector as well. And I'm going to show you how that binds through and does what it does at afterwards. Likewise, it's going to ask us about our certificate, which we have, which is our standard SSL cert as well. And what our standard FQDN is as well. And now that will go through and make all of the changes. That is all the input we need to give it. It will go through and collect everything and run through. Now I'm going to leave this just running just for a short while so you can see what it is actually trying to do. A couple of items take longer than others, but generally this is the organization transfer I was talking about before when it comes to policies for things like address lists and transport. Um, I'm going to say, you know what? I am going to review them. We want to have a quick look and see what they are. And you can see these are all of the items. So we have things like the MRM policy, the org config, the remote domains. I'm going to say, yep, you know what? I'm happy with all of those. Let's just go with them. And now we're ready for the update. Now, this is what is actually doing all of those changes inside the Office 365 system. 
and you can see the commands that it's going to run. Now we used to have to do all these commands manually back in the day when before we had it even called Office 365 when it was BPOS. Um, a lot of these you'd have to do yourself. So this really is a very easy way to do things from this point onwards. So this is a good opportunity to go and have a nice cup of tea while it does what it does. I will let this just roll so you can see what it's doing. But uh, one of those things you just have to hurry up and wait, basically. And while that's going through, I will mention at the end, it will always come back with a couple of issues around OAuth and other things. Um, there's some things we might want to look at later on, but essentially they are not showstoppers for the hybrid configuration. This will work as is, but I will be showing you around the system once it's done what it needs to do so we can get these systems done correctly. It's even setting it up so that it is possible to use the MX records going through the Exchange Online system rather than directly into your mail system. And it will make those changes as well. It won't enact those changes, but it gives you the facility that it, it, they are ready to go. But we do not need to do anything with those until we are absolutely ready. Um, as I said at the start, the, the hybrid configuration uh, walkthrough that I did tells you how those items get pushed over. So you can have a, another listen to that and get a bit more of a handle on how things are working with this. But uh, there we go. And as you can see, there's the message talking about the OAuth. And we are going to bypass that and hit close. So essentially, hybrid is now done. Now, if we have a look, though, at the hybrid system. If we have a small wander around our exchange services, you'll notice that the nice thing is there is nothing changed in a production sense that is going to affect any of our users. One of the main things that has changed, however, is mail flow. Now let's have a look at this here. So we can see we've got our outbound email connector that we originally had. And this is important because it now talks about the delivery. We still have our smart host in there and we still have the same scoping and everything is good to go there. What it's done is it's added an item called outbound to Office 365. Now in our particular situation, as I was talking about previously, the scoping of this is for mail that is in its coexistence state. So anything that is talisoft.mail.onmicrosoft.com as a routable forwarding address will go through this particular connector. Now what I want to do with this one is I want to change my delivery and I want to be able to route that one through the smart host as well. So I'm going to tell that it is that smart host too. Which is like save and importantly there is something else we need to do on here if we need we need to go to the shell because remembering I said that we can't use port 25 on this particular scenario this may not be or may be relevant to your situation 
but we do need to make sure that this outbound connector to 365 does not try to use port 25 but uses port 2600 instead very easy to change okay so when we have this up we are going to if we get our send connector and we're going to have a look at the identity and the port. You'll see that the outbound email is going through 2500. The outbound to 365 is going to try and go through port 25. So we need to set our send connector with the identity of outbound to office 365, like so, and change the port to 2500 that run that again we'll see we how have a port 2500 that will now deliver appropriately and in this scenario we need to do nothing with the receive connectors the receive connectors are going to be totally fine we do need however to change the receive connector side on the office 365 component which I'm going to jump into now and show you so you can see we're logged in as the 365 user. We can see all of our accounts here. We need to do show all and we need to run down to exchange. Now this is where we start to see everything that happened with the exchange configuration that we've done. And what I'm interested in here is first of all, I wanna have a look at the contacts that are listed. And you can see we have these as contacts now the reason they're in there as contacts is because if we change the mail routing and the MX routing to go through to these uh, block of servers instead the exchange online it needs to know how to get back onto the on-premise system which is what it uh, is doing here and this is what the mail flow comes in and we don't have receive connectors or send connectors they purely are just connectors and you'll see there's two of them set up here which will be talking about having inbound and outbound so you can see here inbound from your organization's email server to 365 and from 365 to your organization's email server this is the one we want to look at because this is the one we need to now have a look and change we need to go to next and as you can see this is for email sent to these domains to the talisoft domain we need to have next it's going to go through mounting routing to this particular uh, smart host which is mail.talisoft.com now this is what is wrong we need to go and change this one to our smart host which happens to be mx2.limegreenfrog.com and this particular scenario doesn't use tls so i'm going to turn that off normally you would and we'll say next and it will do a check now and we'll validate and we'll send one to our user Annie Platt to say Annie can you grab mail and can you validate and this is checking that 365 can send email onto your on-premise system It runs through and sends the mail and the verification is just testing that there's no NDR bouncing back. Let me say close here and we have now succeeded for both of those. So we can now save and we are done. So our routing in our particular scenario with our port 25 little uh, play we're doing is good. Now if I jump up to workstation one you can see that Annie Platt has a test email from 365 saying, is this going to work or not? So essentially, we are now ready to have everything done for the 365 connection. The hybrid we can see is all working correctly and we are ready to migrate users. Into